Hi, this is Paul from uh, Backcountry Bug Out and Blade HQ. Uh, came out and uh, just testing some gear and uh, testing our skills today. The scenario that we're running today was a scenario where we were traveling along and that we had a vehicle breakdown. And with that situation, you know, the first thing you're going to do is stay with your vehicle. Usually help will come. We ran it as if uh, help wasn't going to come after about two days, that we were out of water. That was our first priority for survival. And once we'd gotten the uh, water taken care of, then our next uh, issue was to get shelter and fire. Today it's uh, what am I carrying and what's in my bag. We've uh, run a scenario and just want to show you what we got going. So this is the Maxpedition EDC. It's a good bag. Uh, we wanted to run something that was smaller. Normal, uh, normally we'd run like a 72 hour bag, you know, something that's quite a bit bigger. We can take a lot of things, but this time we wanted to go kind of more lightweight. This is for starters, you know, this is the size of a bug out bag. This is my bug out bag. I just broke it down, made the EDC bag for this weekend. Um, I think a lot of people go overkill with EDC bags. They try to pack everything for every possible scenario in when realistically it's a three to five day pack tops and at worst case scenario, you're moving from your work to your house or from a relative's house to your house, you know, something small. At worst case scenario, you're out here, you know, you wait to find for signaling. So for signaling, I just have my saw blanket that I picked up from Blade HQ. I've had it for two or three years now, you know. It's got this metallic liner in here. We used them last night to sleep with. We were plenty warm. It's got multiple uses. Um, probably one of the best purchases I've made for my bag. So what's in my bag? Well, standard, I'm always going to carry some type of rain gear. This is a jacket that I usually have on me or in my uh, vehicle. Always a pair of gloves to protect my hands. You're always doing a lot of things out here that are sharp, um, can cause you problems. You can get blisters, you can get cuts. And if you're going to get them, typically that's where they're going to be. So gloves will protect your hands a lot. A nice merino wool shirt, long sleeve. It's uh, lightweight, but it provides enough warmth that uh, it'll keep me uh, pretty good along with the jacket in colder environments. And uh, it'll also keep the sun off of you. <clears throat> Blade HQ's Shemog. Um, you can use it as a cravat. You can use it to protect you from the sun. You can uh, use it to uh, splint or uh, do a whole variety of things. Cover the front license plates of vehicles. Usually carry some plastic bags to waterproof equipment. Uh, you can also make a small solar still off of that. You're not going to get a whole lot of water off of it, but you can keep things dry. You can also use it for gathering food or materials. Super absorbent cloth, ShamWow. Uh, it's also a great thing if you uh, need to dry off or if you're in a grassy area in the morning, I can drag this along the grass and pick up dew. Uh, also, if uh, there is a uh, big cut, then this can be put over that cut to absorb and uh, we can use the uh, shemog to tie that off. I carry just a couple coffee filters. Uh, you can use them if you want to like with the ephedra how, or how we had or the, you know, the Mormon tea. You can wrap it up in this so you don't get a lot of, uh, you know, kind of debris floating around in your tea. You can also filter water with it. I'm not saying it's going to get rid of giardia, but you're not going to have as much sand and mud in your water if you need to get into that. I've got my survival straw that I picked up from Blade HQ. You saw us use it. Um, it's just a good backup option for clean water. Obviously, I think you should boil water whenever you can. Get a full-size filter like a Katadyne, something like that. But these are great to have just in an EDC bag because you can fill up a water bottle like so, you know, and uh, drink from the water bottle. If you have to contaminate your water bottle, by all means, you should avoid contaminating your water bottle. But, yep, this little survival straw, it'll keep you going. Ran a uh, ultralight space blanket bag last night. Um, it's pretty durable. It's pretty solid. It is fairly warm, uh, but the problem with these is they retain moisture. As you go through the night, you will perspire, and all that perspiration is going to stay on you. And if you don't pay attention and get up and dry yourself off during the night, add wood to the fire, you're going to wake up wet and miserable. This guy right here I keep in the front, this is a signal mirror. All I need to do, because you got to have some sort of a rescue, you don't want to stay out here indefinitely. I find the sun and I reflect it onto my hand, okay? 
split my finger and I aim it at something and I just flash it at the planes that flies over. We had our Ontario machete. We've had this in almost every video we've done now. It's taken a lot of abuse. I think for $50, that's probably one of the best. I think it's 50 to, we're in the 50 to 70 price range. Um, that's taken the most abuse out of anything I've owned. Um, I mean, we've built every living arrangement we've had out here with it, so. Next, this little MSR pot that I keep in here. I just keep it in a plastic bag because it gets covered in stuff that I'm cooking with, so I don't want to, you know, have that floating around in my bag. Always a change of socks. Keep a knife sharpener, keep some super glue. I like a Bic lighter. Coffee filters. I just have a small commercial first aid kit right here. So I have bug spray, sunscreen, a small pen light, hand sanitizer, uh, Kleenex, dental floss, and uh, small portable toothbrushes. And then my favorite little blade, the uh, Kershaw Cryo, goes with me everywhere now. And then if I do have a problem with my lighter, then I have the Ferrocesium lighter uh, from Exotac that you can find at Blade HQ. I also like to keep a small supply of food. Keep snacks, pretty much everything Paul had, I run the same thing, just, you know, fruit leather, honey, a little bit of beef jerky, stuff like that. Uh, one tip for your bag, always put your food at the bottom of the bag and here's why. Um, when you're moving, you're gonna be hungry and you're gonna burn through your food. And if you know your food's at the bottom of your bag, you're not gonna wanna take your bag off and dig all the way to get to it. You're gonna think, oh, well, I have to get through all my sleep equipment, everything else. So it kind of forces you to conserve your food. A lot of people go over kill with fire. They want five different things for fire. I just have one of these little light my fires strikers along with some char cloth that we made this weekend. But as you can see, throw sparks just fine. But to me, this is a backup. Carry a Bic lighter. You don't need seven different ways to light a fire. A Bic lighter will light hundreds of fires and you can carry five of them and they weigh nothing. The fire gives you heat. The fire purifies your water. The fire gives you a friend and the fire cooks your food. Okay, the fire is probably the most important thing that you, you need on a survival situation and that's why I have uh, all of these different ways of lighting fire. I carry just a couple little cans of V8 vegetable juice because I realize vegetables are probably not gonna be too uh, readily available. Yeah, it's not a real vegetable, I got it, but it's got the nutrients I need to keep going. Also used this weekend, Victrinox uh, saw, I put some of the natural material, the natural bark rope that we made, I put on it, made a little lanyard for it. And it's just so valuable to have this little saw. This is what I used initially to cut all the branches down for our shelter. Folds right up, very invaluable. And then you saw the K-Bar TDI. It's uh, very utilitarian. Uh, don't be uh, swayed by its size being small. Um, this thing in a fighting situation is an excellent blade to work with. Um, and for cutting and working, as you've seen, it did a great job this weekend. It's compact, it's fairly lightweight, no moving parts, couldn't break it. Um, the last thing I talked about a sharpening tool, I've got one for when I eventually do take the blade off. I, I've got the ability to sharpen that up. And uh, I've got my trip wire. The trip wire we use for snares and so forth. Very last thing is this. My GPS, okay, if I've got one thing, one or two things that are the most value to me are a communication, so I don't have to get into the situation to begin with, which is my cell phone in the truck, and a GPS. We use the GPS to find the water last night. We could use the GPS to find home if we needed to. Sometimes the GPS doesn't work. I only have the batteries that's in it and two backups. If I'm burning through that, which I hope I don't, then we go to old school. I have the old school compass. This is a military compass. You can get them from uh, Army Navy surplus stores. Or you can get a version like this from Blade HQ. The key is I want the ability to shoot an azimuth to the location that I'm going. And then once I've shot that azimuth, I pick that, that tree or hilltop and I walk to it. That enables me the ability to walk in a straight line. So go to Blade HQ, you can get compasses like this. Um, they're the Brunton ones, but you want the ones that you can shoot an azimuth with. That's one of the better ones to put in your, into your bag. Last but not least, you know, I do carry a sidearm. I carry an M&P and I got a TLR-1 from Blade HQ on it. Um, I'm not gonna tell you what weapon to use and I'm sure someone's gonna criticize me for carrying that gun because blah, 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 blah. 
but carry whatever weapon's good for you. You know, some people don't want to carry a sidearm, and that's awesome. You know, I totally respect people that, you know,'s decisions to not, and I respect people's decisions to do so. So whatever you think's gonna work for you, but just remember when you're building your bag, build it for the scenario you think you're gonna be in, build it to what you need to accommodate to, plan from there. The uh, Maxpedition EDC bag was good. I liked the uh, kind of modularity of it. I liked that uh, it was very compartmentalized. And you know, there's enough room in a small bag like this that you can run for quite a while if you're pretty smart and selective about what you're gonna put in. The bag's a good bag for something to just keep kind of behind your seat of your car or your truck or something like that. It's a decent, you know, uh, you know, three-day bag. Just get home as quick as you can. You're not gonna be living comfortably, but you will be living and that's kind of the, the point to take away from this so that's all we're trying to demonstrate with these is you can get by with a smaller bag if you need to